Hey guys, welcome back to another Tech Debt Repair video. In today's episode, we're going to be working on a 13 inch MacBook Pro uh, model A1989. It's going to be a 2018. Uh, this was mailed into us for a keyboard replacement. Uh, this is actually a unique laptop as it is a, a German keyboard. As you can see, it's quartz instead of QWERTY. Uh, but the keyboard unfortunately no longer works and since they're in the u.s they're looking to switch over to a u.s, US keyboard anyways uh, the timing kind of works out uh, so let's go ahead and get that keyboard replaced for them all right so as with any macbook repair the first thing we're going to do is flip it over and remove the pentalobe screws on this unit there is six of them and two of them in the top corners are actually going to be longer than the other ones across the bottom that's the only thing you need to note. Uh, the ones across the bottom are all the same length. So when you're putting the unit back together, uh, you can put any of the four that aren't as long as the top two anywhere at the bottom. And to pop the bottom cover off, we're gonna use the help of a suction cup. And then we're gonna pull it towards ourselves. There we are. Pop this side off and we are now in the unit. All right, so since we're gonna be swapping everything you see here, minus the top case with the battery over to this new unit, we're gonna to have to take everything out of this guy here. And of course, as any repair is gonna start once you're inside, you're gonna go ahead and disconnect the battery daughter board cable located right here. And using a T5, we're gonna take off this pancake screw that holds the battery connection to the motherboard there we are so now the battery is safely disconnected and everything is good to work on since we're going to be removing everything we're going to work in top-down fashion uh, so that means we're going to start with the t5 screws the four at the top that hold the lcd and wi-fi assembly vent assembly to the top case then we're going to switch to a t3 screwdriver and take off uh, the four to one either hinge location uh, hinge cover screws followed by the hinge covers themselves and we're going to work inward a little more here so there's going to be four screws two here and two here uh, that hold the lcd assembly to the top case as well we're going to remove these these are quite long screws and then we're going to move on to the display connection cable here and again, this is all a T3 screwdriver, as well as the retention bracket below the top one. All right, now we're gonna go to a PL1 and remove all the screws across the top on both sides that hold the Wi-Fi vent module to the top case. All right, so now we're gonna take our plastic spudger and go around the board, unplugging the rest of the connections, prepping the board as well as everything else for removal. We're gonna start in the top right here. Don't forget the Wi-Fi antenna cables in the center, of course. And of course the touch ID that lies under the headphone jack. Don't forget to unplug that one as well. All right, so one more quick sweep uh, going counterclockwise this time. Just to make sure all of your plugs are unplugged, we're gonna start with the touch ID, the headphone jack, Type-C port, both these speakers, the keyboard, trackpad, of course battery flex cable and battery connector point should already be undone at this point the three Wi-Fi antenna cables, more speaker cables, the fan cable, microphone array, the Type-C ports, and this LCD proximity sensor, followed by the LCD cable itself. So now that all the connections are confirmed to be unplugged, we can go ahead and move on to the next step. We're gonna switch back to a T5 for almost the rest of this here. Starting in the top left and right, there's gonna be two T5 screws holding in the logic. And moving our way across the logic board, there's gonna be more T5 screws as well. 
And again, don't forget the hidden one that holds the Wi-Fi vent module and Wi-Fi antennas in place. And since we are going to be transferring everything, like I said, to the other top case, we're going to have to remove uh, the eight trackpad T5s that hold it in place on either side, as well as two on the bottom. All right, so now we are all good to start pulling parts out. I'm going to go ahead and start with the headphone jack just because that is essentially already freed. I'm going to move on to this Wi-Fi vent module. Now I'm going to go ahead and pull out the logic board. And it reveals a few more screws for us to do here, of course. Using a T3, we're gonna take out all of the screws that hold the cooling fans to the top case. And then switching back to a T5 screwdriver, we're gonna take out the two screws that hold both of the Type-C ports into the top case. Now we can pull out our Type-C ports. and flip up the retention bars on the CPU fans. And you'll notice now the only thing left in this unit uh, is going to be the touch ID. And these are going to be four uh, outside silver T3s and two of the inside uh, black T3s as well that hold this little bracket into place. And now we can go ahead and open up the unit just very slightly and fish our trackpad cable down and under and pull the trackpad out, set it aside with the cable attached. Now we're going to open up the unit a little bit more here. Pull out the touch ID, set that aside and keep it opening, uh, opening the unit up and pulling off that bad bottom case. As you can see, the space bar actually fell off in the time we were taking all the parts out. Uh, yeah, so definitely time to replace this. Let's go ahead and get the new one open and ready to go. All right, so we've got our brand new top case here, as you can see complete with battery and speakers, microphone array, almost everything we need here besides the parts we took out of our old top case there. So let's go ahead and get it unboxed. Uh, but if you guys are looking for any parts or tools, check out the links below. If you're interested in mail-in repair, data recovery service, check us out at techdep.com. We do it all every day. We've got our brand new unit here. I'm actually gonna install the LCD last. So we're gonna go ahead and set that LCD apart right now. And we're going to start by reinstalling the CPU cooling fans here. So make sure the retention bar is open as it is on this left hand side here. Slide our flex cable into place. Make sure it seats all the way down and close it and put the tape cover back down. If this is not connected all the way, the retention bar is broken or not closed, uh, it could cause either or both of these fans to run at 100% fan speed. Uh, it's quite annoying and I don't think anybody wants that. So if you have any issues with your fans after installation, uh, after getting the unit back up and running, unfortunately, it uh, looks like you're gonna have to take it all apart again because one of those cables is either not seated or the connector is not closed or one of the, or both of the options have occurred and that's resulting in the fans running at full speed. Uh, so if you reassemble your unit and that's happening to you, uh, check both these cables here. All right, so now that everything is lined up, we're gonna take our T3 screws and our T3 screwdriver and secure them back into place. All right, next we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the Type-C ports. 
and secure them into place using their respective two T5 screws. Next, we're gonna go ahead and install the touch ID sensor. Uh, this bracket here technically has two sides. What you're gonna do, see the black side, that side's gonna face up. The side with the silver edges is going to face down. And the side with the notch right here, is gonna face upwards uh, towards the top of the unit. You're gonna lay it into place just like so and screw it down. Remember, these are T3s and the two black screws go in the center and the four silver ones go on the corners. All right, and I like to always test my fitment. It looks like I screwed it in a little bit too much. If you don't get a very tactile um, feel to it, it means your edge screws are a little bit too tight. Back them out just a little bit. And it should now give you that tight tactile click. And again, since we're down here, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall our headphone jack. And these are T3s as well. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and install our trackpad here. Since we left the cable attached, all we have to do is feed the cable through the hole. And line it up. Easiest way to line it up is by looking at the two bottom holes here. If you look in the edges, they're pretty deep, kind of hard to see. Uh, but again, these are T5s. And I'm gonna install the two bottom screws here on either side. Uh, these are the shorter of all the screws. And now that we have every screw, every screw started, you can go ahead and tighten them all in place. And again, I'm just gonna give this a feel, see if it feels right. Feels good to me. Perfect. So now that we have everything that's gonna go beneath the board installed, we can go ahead and reinstall the logic board here. Now the only important notes here are to make sure that you do not cover any of these connections when you're installing the board or else you have to pull it back out. And there we are. So as you can see, we reinstalled everything without covering any cables. Let me just clean out this dust real quick. All right, everything is lining up correctly. And we just have a few more things to do here before we wrap it up. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and install our back panel here by lining it up on either side. So now we're gonna go ahead and secure it into place using the PL screws. Uh, you wanna make sure you put the two longest ones at the top and the four smaller ones at the bottom. All right, that's our bottom panel installed. Just click it down into place, flip it over, and let's go ahead and give it some power and turn it on. Alrighty, looks like it's got a little bit of a dead battery. Now it's turning on. And everything looks good to go. It's booting into the OS and everything will be all good. Alrighty, thank you guys for watching. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. With the help of the community, we'll make sure to assist you. If you saw any parts or tools you need in the video, check us out at techtap.com or click the link below for mail-in repair. We'll see you guys in the next episode.